Hey everybody, thanks for showing up again. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to replace bottom frames. As you can see, we do a lot of bottom frames here, uh, especially when we're putting new bottoms on or a boat that's like this that's in such bad shape, but it's a very collectible boat. And in the future, I'll go over this boat and let you guys know what it is and what we're doing to it and why we're going to the lengths we are to restore something like this that's so bad. But like I said, today we're going to be talking about replacing bottom frames. So what I did is I took out the old bottom frames. There was three pieces. There's one on each side and there's one right in the middle. I've taken those out and I've separated those. And these frames were actually in not too bad a condition, but what you can see here is the screw holes and where they've split on top of the screw holes, and that's not good. Also, they're very oil soaked. And so a collectible boat like this, what we want to do is make sure we want to replace those bottom frames, just to give the boat a really uh, great second life. So what I did first, is I <clears throat> unbolted the keel from the boat and then I took out one of the frames and that would be those three pieces that sit here and then um, I'll leave the keel back in there because that's an important part what you want to be able to do is set that frame right in here and make sure that it lines up with your chime and it lines up with the keel once you get the new one built so there's three places that we really have to make sure are right on these frames. And that is this edge right here, whether it's beveled side to side, and it's at the right distance, the length, to meet the other frame. Now some of them, what you'll find over time is that the boats actually split and come apart a little ways and pulled away from the keel. It's the chines have literally pulled away from the keel. And you'll see a space right here before you take the old frame out. That's not the way that Chris Craft built the boat. Chris Craft built these frames to be tight. So if you see that, just know that that's from age and wear and tear. Also, this chine should be tight against here. So the other critical place is right here. This is where it sits on the stringer itself. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can see that it's dented. Uh, years ago when this boat was first built it was flat and so we don't want to build that back into the new frame we want to make sure that that is a nice flat transition but what that's going to do it's going to raise up the frame a little bit so you know it's going to be raised up a little bit because we're going to fix that so you might have to adjust the ends so i can show you now how we are going to trace those frames out and I'll show you some aspects and what you got to look for. Places where you have to add material, places where you can basically go right to the line and saw right to the line. Okay, right here where I'm pointing is, is where the stringer sits and you can see that's that place that it was dented. I make two little marks and then I trace right to the bottom of the frame. Now we want, we, we're gonna cut this right on the line. And then I'm just making a little tick on both ends and then I'll just basically trace the whole frame out. And then I'm gonna add at the very ends. And so I make this little block and it's about eighth inch thick and by about one inch wide. And I'm gonna use that as my little block, my little edge to draw to. So I've added an inch to that end and then I've done the same and added an inch to the other end. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to flip it up on its side. Now that's going to add an eighth of an inch to the top where the keel goes. And then I'm going to draw another line about an eighth inch away from the top. You can see that on my other one that I've already traced out. And that's, to, that's what I'm going to plane to when I fare out the bottom. So make sure that you mark your frame so you don't get them mixed up, starboard and port. and.
So now what I have done is I've got this area taken care of and this dip right here is out of there and now it's nice and flat. So the next thing I want to do is I want to cut my end here that's going to be rested against the chine. What you're going to find though is that some of them are perfectly 90 degrees. Some of them have an angle on it because of the angle of the chine in the boat, the way it wraps around. This one is up forward of the step. And so let's just check to see if it does have one. So you just take your hand square here and it does. It has a slight bevel on it. So we want to make sure that we put that bevel into the new frame. And the way you do that is with an adjustable square. Hold that adjustable square up tight to it. And there you go. That's the angle. Like I say, it's very slight, but there is an angle there. Make sure that you draw the angle on the piece of wood correctly. So what I do to do that is I just put a line like, okay, I want the angle to be like this. That's not my angle. That's just to remind me that that is where the angle needs to be. So take the square, make sure it's right. Make a little mark on the end, hold your square up against it, adjustable square, and draw your line. Now that's the angle that I want to cut that at. So I'm going to cut it here, and I'm going to cut it at the angle. So now I have to set up the bandsaw to cut this angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen the table and bend the table so the line lines up with the blade. So right there. Tighten the table down in place and now we're at our right angle to cut. It's about two and a half to three degrees so it's not much. Also what you want to make sure you want to do is drop your fence down, your guides down to the board. That does two things. That lessens the wobble of your blade for a more accurate cut. Also, you don't want it way up when you're cutting with your fingers close to the blade. You want that down as close to the material as possible. Okay, so let's get it in the boat. But what we should do first though is we should scrape these landings just to make sure that they're clean of debris. Scrape any stuff you got up in here. So now that frame will sit in there real nice. So we'll check to make sure how we did here looks pretty good. This chine obviously has to be bent up a little bit because over time it's spread open. But we can deal with that later. We just want to make sure how it fits. So it's tight. It also, this line here, my line of the true frame is too high. The way that we adjust that is that we cut more off of under here. When we cut more off underneath the keel, what it's going to do is drop down this edge. It's actually going to tilt this way. So that's our next cut. So I made that cut, but you can see that I didn't cut it to the line exactly. What I want to do is I want to sneak up onto it. And that's really important when you're doing frames is that, you know, you've got to leave yourself a little safety here just in case things changed or things are different, you know, I don't want to cut this too low. So I'd rather make a multiple cuts rather than just cut it one time and it'd be too low. Put it back in the boat, get it in the right place where it wants to live. Now you can see that I'm super close. My line is super close to this chine now. I do have to drop it down a little bit more. So let's see how she fits. Get it in there, get it to the right spot where we the, that's going to live. And then we want to make sure that this line right here is lined up with the, with the chine, which it's really, really close. And then also we want to make sure that this line here is lined up with the landing of the keel. And we're sitting really good. It's sitting in there nice. Now when I'm fared the frame, this new frame, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fare this frame to these two frames. And so I'm going to come really close to this line right here, but not necessarily. I might have to leave part of the line 
just to make sure that it's all really nice. But uh, that gives me my guide and that's a third of the frame. So you can see that I, I'm long here and I did that on purpose. So now I wanna make sure my landing is good for my keel. Which it is and I'm right on my line right here. So now I'm on my line. I know I don't have to take any off of underneath this because remember that's a little bit high. We made that a little high because we flattened that out because it had a dent in it. So I don't have to. My line looks pretty good here. I can make that work when I ferret into these two and ferret into the keel. So I'm good. Now I just need to cut my centers for them, the two frames to come together. So my goal now is to make sure that these come together right exactly where they should be and it be a nice, even, uh, closed gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one first really close to this line because I know that we've got enough material. We've got basically, oh, an inch and a half on each side, or about an inch on each side to take away. So I'm going to go cut that. Just making sure your frame is in the right spot, right where it needs to live. Get the other one in there real nice. And then from the edge we just cut, just trace that now onto what, on the other frame. All right, you can see my old line and my new line, and I really don't know which one's which, so I'll show you a little trick to help you with that. Get that back in there. So I'll make my mark again, and then what I'll do is I'll just make some marks outward like that, tight against this, this frame right here, and just draw a line out. Now I can see which one of those lines I touched. So now I know that it's this line right here that I need to cut. So now that we've got our frame sitting in there right, uh, we're lined up on our lines here, and then we've got the center section uh, cut, and that looks really good. We're gonna do the center frame portion of it, and uh, we're gonna trace that out and cut that out. So this one's pretty easy. You don't have to be so technical about the landing so much. Uh, you just want to trace it out. This is kind of a critical area where this keel is going to sit down inside of here. Um, that's kind of a little critical area. We'll make that a little bit high. So what I like to also do is clean up all my lines just to make sure I'm cutting on nice straight lines. Okay, I have it all traced out. I've got my lines extended so when I come into a cut, I can follow it easier. By the time I get to this area, I'm right on the line. That's why I extend my lines past where they need to be.
So there was a section here that we couldn't cut on the bandsaw because it got in the way of the upright. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, this is similar to a Japanese pull saw. Um, it is pull on one side, but then it has teeth. This is a, a Von Bear saw and uh, for, it works really good for very precise cuts. All right, we're gonna set some clamps on here just to hold these frames while we remove the keel. Now we can remove the keel. So next we're just going to tie all these together with the screws and the carriage bolts. But what I want to look at is just kind of their pattern that they used. Uh, this is, you know, you see this in a lot of the boats and the crisscrafts. They were pretty much screwed the same way. Um, so just kind of follow that pattern. So we'll make a couple hole marks here. So now all we need to do is drill through for our carriage bolts. And you just wanna kinda of pay attention to the way that they put the bolt through, which direction. Up forward here, they put the, the bolt direction through this way and this third frame here, this frame tie, it's on the aft side. But if you look in the back here, it's on the front side and the carriage bolts are, are drilled the opposite way. So just kinda of make a, Metal note to pay attention to which way the fasteners and which way the frames are. Okay, our, our frame is complete. Uh, it's screwed through, it's carriage bolted through. Now the next thing we would need to do is drill through here and into the stringer. Now we're not gonna do that right now because that stringer is gonna be replaced. We may replace this one too, we'll just have to see. Um, so I don't wanna drill through that one yet. So I'm just gonna leave them like they are. So that is, that's it for part two for uh, frame replacement. Hope that was helpful for you. Next time what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be fairing some of these frames. I'm gonna get this frame built and the forward one up and then we'll have every other frame in the boat in place. And then we can uh, start fairing our frames to our old ones. So that'll be uh, uh, episode three. So stay tuned for that. And uh, thanks for watching, and don't, hit, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and uh, hit the like button if you like what you see, and hit that bell if you want to be reminded. So uh, until next time, we'll see you back here. Bye.